parking garage. Fingers crossed it's not raining. Oh man, it's good to be back with my bike. I say that I just rode in from Fort Smith yesterday, so I'm filming this the day after. Uh, there's some more footage that I'll put in there for my trip at some point. I don't know, maybe this video, maybe another one. Um, yeah, it's still recording. But I'm actually on the way to the shop right now to drop my bike off because I need to get the front brakes looked at. It still has that issue that I was talking about with the front brakes feeling like they're warped. I actually checked the rotor and they're not warped. <laughs> so the only thing that could be causing that is like consistent... Uh, uh, oh yeah, I also I put it up on the front stand, like the race stand. And it actually, um, when you grab the tire and spin it, it catches at a certain point. So it's like the brakes are dragging along the rotor. So I think it's a caliper issue or uneven brake pads or something. But the calipers are like not rusty, but like they're, they're corroded or, or something. And they're extremely hard to get off with the tools that I have. So I'm swinging it by this place uh, up here in North Little Rock called Al. And I've, uh, I've, they've been highly recommended. Everyone that I've talked to is like, oh yeah, take it to Al's. Because the majority of places around, Ar the thing about Arkansas is everyone rides cruisers here. Um, I've seen maybe nine or ten sport bikes since I moved here nine months ago from Atlanta. And it's just, it's disheartening, you know, shit. That gets me every fucking time. Um, it's disheartening, you know, because I'm now riding a sport bike and not a cruiser. At the time, when I moved here, I was riding a uh, 2015 SR400 which has spent the majority of its life in a shop because it fucking sucks. Um, and it's just a lemon, you know, there's nothing wrong. Like, SL400s are supposed to be solid. They're supposed to be these unbreakable machines. And it just pisses me off that I happen to get the one that just fucks up left and right. But that's a story for another video. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I'm on the way to get a little, uh, I haven't come up with a name for her yet. But my uh, SL400, her name is Sarah, because SR. And then I had a Virago. I never, I never, oh. No, I don't want to get on this like this. God, I just fuck it up. I'm not used to, like, talking, trying to carry on a conversation while I, um, ride. <laughs> so, usually I'm a little more on point with direction. Of course, then again, I've actually, I'm using my center right now to record my audio. And, um, I'm still waiting on my adapter to come in for my GoPro. I drilled the hole and everything. Well, I've got the adapter, I just wanted the microphone. Uh, yeah, so... Fingers crossed the audio through all this is good enough to work. Yeah, but yeah, because of the whole front brake issue, I just got to use the rear brake and engine brake way in advance. So like turns like this just freak me out. Every time I see them. But yeah, this is but this, this bike is just it was trash when I got it. It's still kind of trash, but I fixed all the cosmetic things. Like I got all, all exposed, blasted it, peeled off. And I replaced the uh, handlebars, which were, they, the handlebars looked like they might have been the original ones on the bike. They were so worn down. Yeah, I mean, I guess if that's not a priority for people, then they don't replace the handlebars. But for me, that's like, you know, it's, it's like replacing your tires for your hands. You know, good handlebars make a world of difference on a bike. Or good uh, uh, grip, I should say. I don't know if I said handlebars before. I guess to extend that analogy, the handlebars would be the wheels for your hands, and then the grips are the tires, I, I guess. Oh, fucking hell. Damn light. Never picks me up. Oh, wow. Man, every time... So, I, I didn't smell a skunk for a very long time um, growing up. In fact, I, the first time I ever smelled what a skunk smelled like was about two weeks ago, three weeks ago maybe. I was in the car with my fiance, and I said, man, that really smells like insert illicit substance here. And she was like, what are you talking about? That's, that's just a skunk. And I was like, oh yeah, that's some skunky shit right there. And she's like, no, that's literally a skunk. So that's the story of how I found out how, um, how skunk smell and why the average, the adjective skunk or skunky tends to describe certain illicit substances. Oh my god, this person. 37 miles an hour. Come on now. Come on. No, owls are very sweet. They're about a couple days behind, but they, uh, 
I told him this is sort of my only mode of transportation right now, which it is. <laughs> it's not for my fiance's car, but like, you know, she needs that for school and everything. <clears throat> well, I gotta leave it here. I don't know for how long. Hopefully just for the day. They said they'll give me a call back, but you know how that goes. You know, one bike in the shop, one bike's getting ready to go in the shop. I think I'm going to drop by and check on my SR, see if they've made any progress. It's been fucking at least a month in there. They ordered parts and everything. Last time I talked to them, they just ordered parts, and that was maybe a week and a half ago. So hopefully they're in and they've gotten some progress. <laughs> I want that super photo so bad. <laughs> the WR250 for 2800 I don't know what year, but of course, that's what I, that's what I paid for my bike. So I'd, I'd much rather have mine than a 250 uh, Supermoto, but... You know, it'd be fun. Like, the more I watch uh, Jake the Garden Snake and um, Chase on Two Wheels with their supermotos, the more I really want one. They just look like fun bikes, but I, I wouldn't want to have one as my, as my all-day ride, you know. Well, YouTube, I guess I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted. <laughs>